Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about what my MCAT test day experience was like. If you haven't seen my last video, I recommend watching that first because that's where I explain how I studied for the MCAT on a more broad scale. And in that, I mentioned that to study for the MCAT, I took a lot of practice tests. And I mentioned that really you need to recreate the test day experience as much as possible. So I'm making this video to explain what my test day experience was actually like and how you can recreate that. So that when you walk into the test, you've done it so many times that that's not a distracting factor. You can focus completely on the content. Okay, so the MCAT officially starts at eight o'clock, but you'll wanna be there at least a half hour early. The AAMC actually requires that. So most people show up around seven to 7.15 just so that they have some buffer room in case there's traffic or something. And the only things that you really wanna bring into the actual MCAT are your ID, your keys, your lunch, and maybe a water bottle. And once you get in, they check you in. So you will go up to a, the person one at a time. They will check your ID, they'll scan your palm vein, and then they will take any uh, if you did bring in your phone, then they'll take that and put it into a security bag that you won't be able to open for the rest of the day. And then you put all of your stuff into a locker and then you go immediately in to take the test. So even if you start checking in at 7.30, which is the earliest they would start checking people in, uh, you'll start the test at 7.30. So be mentally prepared for that. If you think they're gonna have you wait till eight, that's not gonna happen unless you are that far back in line that you are behind that many people. And once you go into the testing room, it's pretty much the same experience as an official practice test from AAMC. It'll take you through a tutorial and then you will click start and it'll start the campus section and you'll have about an hour and a half to complete that. So here are the things that I didn't expect. You will definitely want to use some type of hearing blocker, uh, whether that's earplugs or the in-ear headphones. They provide both of them and I will explain why I think you should choose the earplugs in a bit. But essentially you need some type of hearing blocker because you're sitting in a room with like nine other people taking the same test and you can hear them clicking answers and it's kind of distracting to listen to all of that. So you'll definitely want to block your ears in some way so that's not distracting you. So the two options I give you, like I said, at least at my testing center were over the ear noise canceling headphones and uh, in-ear earplugs. So I went, because I had never practiced with earplugs, I went with the over ear noise canceling headphones thinking that that would be better for me. Well, it wasn't, poor choice. I ended up spending about five minutes of every section just adjusting the headphones because they were so uncomfortable. So I recommend taking the earplugs and having done all of your practice tests with earplugs in as well so that that is not something that bothers you during the actual test, you're just used to it at that point. One other thing that I didn't expect was that they don't give you scrap paper when you're taking the test. They give you instead this laminated paper notebook and they give you a wet erase marker. And so you won't be able to erase anything, but if you run out of room in the notebook, then they can replace it. And I actually took this video clip of the actual notebook from the Pearson YouTube channel, and I can link that down below if you wanna watch their explanation. As for the breaks, so you're probably familiar with the fact that there's a 10 minute break between the first two sections, and then a 30 minute break between the next two sections, and then a 10 minute break between the last two sections. And I recommend definitely taking all of those breaks but you want to be careful about getting back on time. So in my testing center, there wasn't a clock anywhere to be found in the building. So I was like asking the lady pretty much every minute, like what time is it? How much time do I have? But you just need to be mentally prepared that that's gonna happen. And every time you enter the testing room, even if it's just for a break, after a break, you have to rescan your palm vein and they have to pat you down. So this happens at the beginning of the day and then after each break, you have to take, it takes like a minute. It's not a very extensive process, but they have to scan your vein and pat you down so that they know you don't have anything. And so you need to schedule that in your break so you're not wasting your test time just trying to get into the room. As for the lunch break, something that I ran into on a lot of my practice tests early on was that I would get really tired after lunch when I took the full lunch break. So I experimented with different timings of the lunch break and different types of food and amounts of food. And I found that the best way to avoid getting tired was to take as short a break as possible. So once I finished eating, I would go back and start the test. And then the second part of that was that I also ate a really small lunch because realistically, you only have to make it through three o'clock that day. You don't have to make it like five more hours without eating, you can eat right when you're done with the test. So why eat a big meal that's gonna put you in a food coma when you can just eat a small one and be content for the last three hours of the test. One other aspect that kind of surprised me, but luckily I was prepared for was that the testing room actually shifted temperatures throughout the day. Um, I'm sure it's different in different testing locations, but at mine, it started out extremely hot in there, and then as the day went on, it actually got kind of cold. So I was glad I had like a sweater on. So when I went into the testing room, I just took off the sweater, 
And then at the end of the day, I was able to put it on so that I was comfortable and that wasn't a distracting factor. Really your goal through all of these is to minimize distraction and just know what to expect so that that is not something that's affecting your score. Because that would be really annoying if your score was lowered by something as simple as it was too hot. So taking away from this, there are a few aspects of this that I think are extremely valuable to recreate in all of your practice tests so you're prepared for them. And one of those is obviously starting the test at the normal time and taking the same time breaks and the same lunch that you will have during your actual test and adjusting that as you're taking the practice tests to figure out what works best for you. So I said that I didn't take the full lunch break. Some people take the full lunch break. Some people don't even take the 10 minute breaks at all. They just go right through the test and if that's what works for you then great. I don't think that that is what works best for most people so I don't really recommend trying that. But other than that there's not really much that's really important to recreate. One thing that I know a few people ran into was that on the actual MCAT they thought their passages were longer than on the practice tests. And I think the causing factor of that was that the MCAT screen resolution is not the same as what a normal laptop monitor would be. So for all the MCAT tests they set your screen resolution to 1280 by 1024 and that's essentially a square so most laptops are not a square they're like widescreen so when they were taking the test since it's a square you have to scroll more through the passages and mentally it seems longer so if that's something you think you would worry about then maybe you want to take a practice test at the correct resolution so that's not a distracting factor okay so you take the test and now what happens when it's over just so you know what to expect they will give you a survey you probably won't have enough time to give all your thoughts into the like two minute, I don't know, I don't know how long it is, the really short time frame they give you to type up all of your comments about the MCAT in general, which I definitely had a few. And then there's also a void question at the end of the test. This question asks you whether you want your exam to not be scored and completely erased from your record that you ever took it. And I hardly ever recommend doing that. Just know that it's an option. So like, say you go into the test and you like fall asleep on your lunch break and you sleep through almost the entire biology section and you know you failed that section. Then you want to void your test because you can obviously do better than that. That's not going to happen though. So don't void your test is what I'm saying. And then you walk out of the room and your test is done. They give you a sheet that says, you didn't void your test, don't worry about it. And then you grab your belongings out of that locker and you can leave. As far as how I felt after the test, so I get a lot of questions like, oh, did you feel like you did really well because you got the score you did? Um, I actually didn't feel the greatest about it. Like there were definitely a few questions that I looked up right after the test that I knew I had gotten wrong. I didn't know anything about cars because you can't look up answers for cars, but for the other sections, there were like some discrete questions where I completely guessed and I definitely got them wrong, and they, somehow they didn't count against my score. And that's another thing. There are some experimental questions on the actual MCAT um, where they don't count towards anyone's scores, which is kind of trash because you don't know which ones they are, and they're really just for statistics, but really everyone takes e experimental questions and they might not count. So don't worry about it. In the long run, I didn't feel great about my test, but I knew that I had done decently well. Comparing it to the practice test where I scored um, within one point of my real score, um, it felt a little bit harder, but I still did the same as on the practice test. So I hope this video has been helpful and that uh, you're now a little bit more comfortable with what to expect on the actual test.